friends, I'm Jumpy. I hope you had a fantabulous day today. Tonight's story is about Andy Armadillo and his super yummy ice cream stand. Do you like ice cream? What is your favorite flavor? Oh, mine is banana chocolate chip. Delicious. I hope you brushed your teeth tonight, especially if you had some ice cream. Okay, make yourself comfy and rest your sleepy head. I have a story for you. Andy Armadillo and the Ice Cream Stand Written and narrated by me, Jumpy. Andy Armadillo was obsessed with ice cream. He could eat ice cream for breakfast, for lunch, and for dinner. It was extra special to him. Andy didn't have a favorite one because he loved them all. And guess what? Andy never got tired of eating ice cream. Wait, what? Armadillos eat ice cream? I thought they'd eat bugs like termites and cockroaches. Oh? Is bug ice cream a thing? Ew, that just sounds gross. One day, Andy decided that he wanted to sell ice cream to all of the other animals in the land. That is absolutely absurd, his friend Tom Tiger said. The other animals prefer plants and bugs, and I prefer, well, the finest barbecue you could ever find. Yum, yum. Ellen Alligator wasn't so sure either. He said, Andy, you want to change things, and well, I just don't know how the rest of this land will take to something new. Andy felt sad that his friends didn't like his idea. He had his heart set on selling ice cream, and he knew it would do well. Soon, he started to feel afraid that he was going to fail. Those aren't fun feelings, are they? Over the next few weeks, Andy worked hard on creating flavors for all of the animals. He made honey barbecue for Tom and lemon fish for Alan. Oh, don't even ask me what fishy ice cream tastes like. Yuckies, I don't want to know. He made termite chocolate and almond cranberry. He made ice cream of cucumbers and lemon and bread. Everything he could imagine that these wild creatures would crave. Once he had all the flavors done, he had to build an ice cream stand. Who better to help than Wally Woodpecker? He spent all his time pecking wood so he would know the right kind of wood to use, right? Wally was willing to help Andy. That made him happy since it didn't go so well with Tom and Alan earlier. It took Andy and Wally several days to put the ice cream stand together, but it came out great. All that was left was to put up the name. Oh no! Andy was so concerned with the ice cream that he didn't even think of a name for his ice cream stand. Andy's ice cream. Mm, no, too simple. Andy's frozen food. Nope. Andy's cold bugs and cream. No, we couldn't come up with a name and opening day was just a few days away. He'd already announced the opening of his new ice cream stand far and wide. He told all of his family and friends, and they told all their family and friends. The big day was coming soon, and he still didn't have a name. So one day, Andy was watching an old movie on TV, and it hit him, just like that, like a great big snowball to the noggin. Boop! Andy's Frosty Scoops. That's it! That's what I'll name it, he said. And he grabbed a board, painted it blue, and he wrote on it, Andy's Frosty Scoops. Opening day was finally here, and Andy was super excited to share all of these amazing flavors. He was nervous and scared, too, because of what his friends had told him before. But Andy followed his heart and his dreams. He was determined to push through, and push through he did. Lots of animals showed up on opening day. There were elephants and rhinos and monkeys and mice. There were bears and foxes and crickets and crows. Everyone was looking forward to these delicate and delightful flavors. None of these animals had ever had ice cream before. 
What was this cold treat? One by one, Andy served up these frosty scoops of flavor. And one by one, he was told how amazing it was. There was some serious, mouth-watering zaps to the tongue. And not to mention refreshing when you're 1,800 pounds with lots of fur. In this heat. Oh yes, Brody Bear, we see you. Fur and all. There were so many animals. Andy was overwhelmed with the crowd. How was he going to get to all of them and get this ice cream out to everyone? When he turned around, Tom, Tiger, and Alan Alligator were right there, ready to help, dotting on their aprons, and ready to serve out these frosty scoops. It went from one serving single ice cream to three, and they were able to serve every animal that came by. By the time they ran out of ice cream, everyone was able to try a scoop or two of all those yummy flavors. The sun began to set, and Andy thanked his friends for all their help. He couldn't have done this without them. Tom and Alan apologized for not being more supportive in the beginning. They were so surprised at how many animals showed up to his ice cream stand. Tom said to Andy, I'm sorry, friend. I should have believed in you. You worked really hard. And with that, the three of them devoured a hidden bucket of ice cream they found stashed away. I guess that's what happens when you feel that wild instinct kick in. The end. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed tonight's story and learned that sometimes we have to work really hard to make our dreams come true. I believe in myself just like Andy does, and I hope you do too. Speaking of dreams, I hope you have peaceful ones tonight, and I'll catch you on the next story. Dumpy is out!